This tier list is going to be ordered from left to right, so left is better. So first up is the 490. Where's this guy going to go? Let's put him right up here. Well, I didn't want to put this in S tier, actually, because it's so expensive, but, like, I had no choice. Because the 4090 has an advantage. I only make this video twice a year, so by the next video, the 3090 and the 3090 Ti, the supply could, like, completely dry up. And this can be your only choice if you want a graphics card that you can just set it and forget it. Because in my opinion, the 4090 is, like, basically the only really good card in the 4000 series. It does everything well and compromises on nothing, giving you a huge speed boost in games, VR, machine learning applications, and anything else that needs raw GPU power. Because, like, I get it. Back in the day, you could spend like only $300 and you would have like a top of the line card that could play the latest games on Ultra. But right now, it's 2023 and we don't live in the prehistoric times anymore. Computers are used for more than just TF2 and AOL Instant Messenger. You've got mail. People nowadays need a lot of computing power to design things, generate things. And now you can even process voices in real time and sound like any celebrity you want. Or if you want to, you can meet up with 100 people at once in a virtual reality world. Or you can work remotely in your room. Like basically what I'm trying to say is that your life could be in the hands of your graphics card. Plus we have inflation, so $300 in your childhood is worth nothing today. It's worthless. So for you professionals or you enthusiasts out there who know how to use the 4090, like a tool or an appliance, like basically as something for more than just a toy, I think the 4090 is a great choice and it's worth the money. So next up is the 4080. So this guy is going to go all the way up here, surprisingly. So in normal games, the 4080 actually gives 20 to 30% more power than the 3090 at 4K. The VR chat is not a normal game, so how does it stack up? Well, in my experience, because the 4080 has 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's just not enough for the biggest events and parties in VR chat. And I'm speaking from experience because, like, my laptop has a 3070 with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it gets full sometimes. It's true. My desktop, where I have a 3090 with 24 gigabytes of RAM, it rarely fills up, if at all. But the good news is that, like, outside of the biggest events and parties in VR chat. 4080 is going to do just fine, and it owes a lot to the 2.5 GHz boost clock. Like, I love my 3090, but my 3090 only has a 1.7 GHz boost clock. And so, like, if you have a 4080 and you're finding that your frames are dropping in really big events, then what you can do in VRChat is you can hide the avatars that are heaviest to process. Like, honestly, this card is so powerful that I would put it in S tier if it just had more VRAM. But for now, it's staying in A tier, and as the supply of the 3090 and the 3090Ti's are going to dry up on the used market, this is going to be your only choice for any gamer whose budget doesn't match the 4090 or the 4070. So next up is the 4070 and it goes right over here. So are you seeing a pattern? I promise that the pattern is going to get broken later. The 4070 is the mid-range card for all the desktop VR chat players out there. And honestly, it's a decently strong card and it has the same amount of VRAM as one of the best VR cards of last generation, the 3080 Ti. They both have 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And this is despite the MSRP of the 4070 being half of the 3080 Ti, $600 compared to $1,200. Now obviously, the raw power is not comparable at all. The 4070 is a lot weaker than the 3080 Ti. But considering the price point, I think it's fine. I think that the 4070 will be able to do everything in VR chat comfortably. Although if you're in an instance with more than 15 to 20 people, you're going to have to turn the safety settings up. And when you turn the safety settings up, VR chat is going to hide all the sparkling furries and all the e-boys wearing pastel colored hoodies. And if you don't know what safety settings are in VR chat, Basically, it's a feature that auto-hides avatars that are above a certain VRAM usage or above a certain polygon count or a material count. This lets mid-range cards like the 4070 and low-range cards have better performance in crowded instances. In my opinion, the 4070 is the cheapest 4000 series card that I would get to play VRChat on desktop comfortably. Anything lower than the 4070 is kind of like, yeah, you're going to be you're going to be messing with the settings a lot more. So next up is the 4060 and I think at the time of making this video, it literally comes out today or something. And basically, it's complete trash. Although, maybe it's not complete trash. Let me explain. So in June, they're going to release a version with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that's going to be much more RAM than the more expensive 4070 for less price. So that sounds pretty good, right? But the problem is that the bandwidth of the 4060 Ti is really, really low. So what does bandwidth mean? Basically, the bandwidth is like the amount of graphics, such as VRChat characters, skin, and clothing, that can be transferred every second. And so without going into too much detail, Basically, the 4060i's bandwidth is pathetically small. It's so small and short and thin, it's not real bandwidth at all. In fact, it's over 40% less bandwidth than the 4070, which costs literally only $100 more than the 4060ti 16GB. If you buy the 4060ti, you're really running a risk of getting into a graphics card bottleneck. And this is because one of the main features of VRChat is showing graphics. Like all the little games you can play in VRChat, that's cool, but the main draw of VRChat is seeing other people's cute and funny, cool or exciting avatars in high resolution. Like literally in virtual reality, you want to see their textures right in front of your face. 
That's hands down my favorite part of VR chat. As for the actual people inside the avatars, I don't really care about them. So yeah, the only reason this card is not in the trash tier is that there's like one specific instance where this could actually be a kind of a good card, right? It's like maybe you know that you're going to spend most of your time in like a small world with like 10 or less people. I don't know, like I don't know what kind of person this is, but if that sounds like you, this is actually going to be a pretty good value for the money. Like for the price, it actually is good performance and you have the option to get 16 gigabytes of VRAM and you have access to the latest ray tracing, DLSS, and Ligma technology. Just in case you're one of the crazy people who plays games that are not VR chat. But at the end, I would always recommend to pay just a little bit more to get the 4070, which is going to be strictly better for VR chat. Next up, this is an exciting one, the 3090 and also TI. Where is this going to go? Well, actually, it's going to go at the very top. Remember when I, remember when I said this is ordered? It's actually better than the 4090. Let me explain why. So the 3090 and the TI, it's historically done everything well, from games to VR to machine learning applications to mining before Ligma coin crashed. And today, compared to six months ago when I made the last version of this video, it's even cheaper on the used market. You can get a used 3090 for as low as $700, or realistically, $700 $800. And if you do go that route, it probably won't have a warranty. Personally, I prefer to buy graphics cards new or used with a transferable warranty, meaning that like if you buy it off eBay or something, the company will recognize the warranty and transfer to you. But otherwise, it's probably safe to buy graphics cards used. All the graphics cards I've bought used have never given me problems, but yeah. That's only my experience, so if you get fucked from buying a graphics card from eBay, uh, don't blame me. Just know that there is a little bit of risk involved. Anyway, between the TI and the non-TI versions of the 3090, I would usually prefer the TI. It was released two years later, so that means it's more powerful, and it has much better cooling. Actually, the 3090, the cooling is like kind of messed up. Half of the VRAM modules are on the front, so they're like touching the heatsink but the other half of the VRAM modules are on the back. It's just being cooled by like basically nothing. And some people actually did have like half their VRAM get fried because well, only one half has the actual heatsink touching it. But for the 3090 Ti, technology like progressed to the point where they were able to fit all the VRAM on the front side of the card. So all the VRAM is touching the heatsink and it's completely safe. So that's the advantage of buying a 3090 Ti. But a 3090 has its own advantage. Like it's more plentiful, so like it's cheaper and easier to find. So next up is a 3080, and this one, oh my god, this one, this one, is going in the A tier. Like, making this video really makes me appreciate of how good the 3000 series was compared to the 4000. Like, the 3090 and the 3090 Ti, they're already amazing, but the 3080 Ti is also amazing. Like, we were really spoiled last generation. Like, I can say with all my heart that in 2023, the 3080 Ti is still a great card. But the 12 gigabyte of VRAM, it really, really hurts. Like, if you follow gaming, like, a lot of game developers, meaning, like, not, like, random forum posters, but literally the developers themselves, they're already saying that 8 gigabytes might not be enough anymore for games. And if today 8 gigabytes is not enough, then like in a short time, 12 gigabytes is not going to be enough. So yeah, 12 gigabytes doesn't make me really confident. And specifically talking about VR chat, my laptop has a 3070 with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I've managed to fill it up before. So if my laptop can fill up 16 gigabytes of VRAM in VR chat, this 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes, I don't know. So yeah, that sounds kind of bad, but I still put this in A tier. That's because the 3080 Ti is so damn powerful that it kind of makes up for it. Also, the price, you can find this for around five to $600 used, and that is just amazing for what you get. And obviously, at this point in time, like it's not going to have any warranty, and it's going to be missing the manual and missing the disc and whatever. And it's going to come with like someone's pet hamster like stuck inside of the graphics board. If you can't afford anything more expensive, whether like new or used, getting a 3080 Ti used is going to be pretty good for VR. Just uh, make sure to hide avatars that have a lot of VRAM usage. So next up, you might think it's 3070, but we're going to skip that for a second. Let's talk about the 3060 12 gigabytes. So where's this one going to go? Well, surprisingly, it's going to go in the B tier. So for around $300, you're getting 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is the same as the 3080 Ti and the 4070, by the way. Isn't that amazing? And obviously, the raw power is obviously nowhere near the 3080 Ti and the 4070, but you can get this for like $300 new. And it's going to play every modern game at 1080p. And you can even have a comfortable VR experience in a room with 10 or less people without filling up all your VRAM. And if you do get into an instance in VRChat where it's like kind of filling up your 12 gigabytes of VRAM, VRChat has settings that can automatically lower the detail or even completely hide avatars that are lagging you. So for only $300, I think it's really realistic to play VRChat with this card. And then later, after you graduate elementary school, you can get a real job and buy the 4090. You can do it! So next, let's talk about the 7900XTX. So this guy is a powerhouse. It has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, and it's not even that expensive. So this one is going all the way to the C tier. So 
when the 7000 series was announced, AMD said that they were fixing AV1 coding. And AV1 encoding was one of the main obstacles stopping AMD cards from being good for VR. So now it's the end of May, and maybe it's fixed, maybe it's not. But the reality is that the 7000 series is still not listed as supported on Meta's Oculus Link official compatibility list. So if you're having problems in VR and you have a 7000 series AMD card, Meta's gonna be like, well, we don't even support that card, so we're not even gonna try to help you. Go play in traffic. And honestly, you are basically guaranteed to have problems in VR with a 7000 series card because a lot of people are posting about it on Reddit and the official AMD forums. One of the biggest problems people have with AMD cards is that they can't watch videos in VR chat. And that's one of the main features of VR chat. Like if you play this game, then you know that almost every single world in VR chat has a video player. And people use the video players to watch things with their friends or to play music while they talk or play other games in VR chat. AMD cards have trouble doing this out the box. Like I really want to like the 3900 XTX because I think the price is amazing for the VRAM and the power that you get. You get so much of both that it just doesn't work. Like if you want to actually use this card, which is really powerful and a really good deal on paper, like you got to go through the forums, you got to read all the posts, you got to like tinker with your settings and your launch options. You got to learn which months of drivers are the best and you have to not upgrade to the next months of drivers because those are going to break your VR. And then when you actually get into VR chat, you got to learn like which features work and which features don't work. Like, I don't know, it's just too much. I can't recommend the 7900 XTX over any of the other cards above it. But later in the video, there is some good news for AMD users. So let's keep going. So the 7600, I think benchmarks for this just came out today. And we can safely say that it is trash. But first, let me say that like considering the price, it actually has some good power and it's really small. So it fits into a lot of cases and it's really power efficient. So it saves you money on electricity and doesn't generate a lot of heat. AMD says that it's as strong as the Nvidia 3060 12 gigabytes, but cheaper. And the 3060 12 gigabyte is a B tier card in this list. So why is this in the trash tier? Well, obviously it's because it has only eight gigabytes of RAM and that doesn't cut it for VR chat. And even worse, it's an AMD card. So we know it's gonna suck for VR or maybe it won't even like load VR at all. And like I said before, the 7000 series has been out for a while and Meta still doesn't officially support it. Like literally according to Meta, the 7000 series has so many problems that it basically doesn't exist to them at all. So if you wanna play VR chat or you wanna play any VR game on a budget, then do not get the 7600. Like, why did I even put it in this video? Although, if you do want to play regular games at 1080p, I think it's a pretty good value. Next, let's talk about the 6800 XT. This one, this one's an oldie but a goodie. Where's it going to go? This is going in the C tier, but better than the 7900 XT. So the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT, they were both beasts last generation. Like, especially the 6800 XT, it really, really impressed me of how much power and value you got for the price. Like, even the weaker card, the 6800 XT, it could chew through VR games. As long as you got the specific months driver that worked, like you made sure like no matter what, you would not let it upgrade to the next months driver because that would break it. Yeah, that's literally a thing if you're an AMD user. But there are people who I've seen on Reddit, like they have stuck with their 6,000 cards for VR and they waited and waited for some problems to be fixed. And eventually some drivers came out that worked for VR and then they were happy. VR worked pretty okay for them, apparently. And also I'm only talking about the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT because the 6950 XT, apparently it has unique driver problems. That's kind of weird, right? But personally, I'm way too busy to do all this like tinkering and like waiting and hoping and coping for the right driver to come out. Like I really don't want to mess with any of that. I just want to install a graphics card and then play VR chat. So personally, I would never ever buy an AMD card for VR chat. But for you guys out there who are AMD fanatics and you're just like hoping or curious that can it do VR well? Like yeah, it can. Apparently it can. And yes, the 6000 series is officially supported by Meta on Oculus Link. And so next let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about the Intel Arc. Okay, let's, uh, this, this is def this is a graphics card. This is definitely one of the graphics cards of all time. Uh, yeah, it's trash. Now the 3070, this one is trash. Yep, 3070 sucks. Goodbye. 2060, trash. 1650, trash. Hamster wheel. A hamster wheel can generate electricity if you link it up to a battery, but it's trash. If you want to know more VR chat tips and tricks, as well as the best gear to buy, then like and subscribe. If you think my tier list is wrong or stupid and you want to yell at me, then let me know in the comments. See you guys next week.